Sega Afterburner, what a beast of a game. One of my favourite arcade games of all time, and it turns 30 this year. So what better way of celebrating its birthday than with the release of the enhanced version of the ROM set? I was inspired to do this after playing the M2 version of the game, which is fantastic. It's on the 3DS. You've got lovely 3D graphics, a new game mode designed by the Ikaruga designer, new music tracks, and lots of other cool features too. Definitely worth buying if you don't have a copy. The problem with it is, it's on the 3DS, and it's a bit crap. So, if you want to play Afterburner properly, you really need the machine. You need the analog controls, you need the throttle stick, it just doesn't feel the same anywhere else. So, if you're lucky enough to have the original machine, the enhanced version of the ROMs are for you. They bring a working free play mode, high score saving, new music tracks, software dip settings, and many more changes and, and improvements that you wouldn't have had before. Really, I've focused on making this the definite version to run in a home environment. So if you've got the machine at home, it will make it a lot more usable. It will save you having to, uh, to reach inside the machine, change dip switch settings, and all these other annoyances that you'll have had to have done before. There's no hardware modifications needed to run the enhanced version. All you need to do is install three new EEPROMs. You don't need to do any soldering, it's very plug and play. So let's take a look at some of the features with the enhanced version of Afterburner. One of the first problems with using Afterburner in a home environment is there isn't a working free play mode. You'll look at the manual and you'll see, ah, oh, I can enable free play mode. And yeah, you'll get the text in the bottom left. Doesn't work. So this version of the game, you've got a full working free play mode. So you don't need to go reaching inside this cabinet door here, finding the button to insert a credit. None of that faff. Just press the button here. There you go, the game starts. Oh, and what have you got here? So, here you've got two new menu options, enhanced music and stage select. So we can toggle these using the, uh, using the controls here. So let's say uh, we want to start with the new music and let's jump straight to stage five this time round. So we're going to take off here as normal and then we'll jump straight to stage five. You don't need to use the level select, just leave it set to one. The game will play as normal if that's what you want to do. So yeah, here we go. Straight into the landing sequence. Okay, so here we are in the dip switch screen in the settings menu. In the original game you can't actually alter any of these options apart from by using the dip switches in the uh, on the circuit board itself. But in this version of the ROMs you can actually change all of these options. So if you decide you want to try the game on a different difficulty it's as easy as just pressing start and yeah you can toggle all of these options here. Great. Uh, the other uh, new option that exists in this menu is for attract mode and in the original game there was just the old occasional explosion in attract mode which was actually a bit annoying if you wanted the machine to be quiet. Additionally if you wanted attract mode with a decent amount of sound you couldn't have it, it didn't really exist. So dip switch 3 has been repurposed uh, so that you can now have sound in attract mode. So we're just going to turn that on now. So here we go, attract mode now has full sound, music, the full works really. So if you want to show off the game to the best of its abilities, then you can do. Let's take a quick look at the new music tracks. I've repurposed the uh, main music option sound test. All the tracks now have their correct names um, rather than the placeholder ones that the original ROM set had. Um, you'll notice that there are, apart from the six normal Afterburner tracks that are here, there's three new ones at the bottom of the screen. Um, now 
if we do, if we choose a track maybe like Final Takeoff, you'll hear that this is actually a different piece of music uh, that was never released as part of the original game. The data files existed and they were recovered by the team working on the 3DS version from the original 8-inch uh, floppy disks. So this is the first time these have been heard back on original arcade hardware. The other change I've made to the service mode is that the sounds no longer fade out. So you can actually listen to the music in full, whereas before the music would fade out after about 30 seconds or so. You may have actually heard these versions of the tracks before. They were released on the 30th anniversary edition box set. In addition, some of the home conversions actually use this music but it was never on the original arcade game, so all of this melody that you can hear now is brand new. So it can only really be assumed that um, some of these tracks weren't used in the original cut because it was felt they were probably a little bit overwhelming in terms of the amount that was going on in them with all the explosions and sound effects that were happening in the game as well but in a home environment and they're pretty cool. So yeah. At this point you'll hear the new melody over the track. As for the uh, last track, uh, Max Power, or Maximum Power, I'm not actually too sure what the difference is with that version from the, the original version, but it was there in the ROM, so I figured I'd hook it up and um, at least allow you to play it from the service menu as well. So there you go, isn't that cool?